Okay, I'm going to make a video on spalling uh, nodules of, of flint. And um, these are all heat treated, all these nodules. And I haven't tested them except for maybe a few flakes off the exterior. Uh, these are from an, an uh, eroded bank from the Llano River in Texas. And I, I found them just like this. Put them in the oven, 400 degrees. Well, first I dried them out at 250 degrees for a day, 24 hours. And then cranked it up to 400 degrees for another six or eight hours and then let the oven cool down slowly. Um, I think I've discussed that before. But anyway, I'm just gonna go over how I reduce these down into uh, bifaces. Since I've had a lot of uh, people asking me about what the best strategy is to reduce these. And it really isn't a strategy. Um, but I, I picked some of the worst looking nodules that I've got. Um, to demonstrate. And some of these might not be very good on the inside. So if they're not if they're not any good I'll just uh, go on to the next one. I, I try to eliminate the biggest lumps first like this big lump here. I'll try to get rid of that somehow. And that was a, a natural platform. I just take opportunistic flakes on these. I can use that flake that I've tossed down there as for a arrowhead. Oh, I was hoping that would go across, but there's some cracking in here. It didn't allow the flake to travel. So I'm just going to go around knocking off bad areas try to get it started so that I can start going around the piece I might be able to hit on this platform here and remove a lot of this mess it's just a quartzite hammer stone That one broke up there because there's a there was a crack here. Otherwise, I think the flake would have traveled this way instead of stopping at the crack here. But there's still, you know, fairly usable chunks. There's a crack in here. That's not bad, it's on the edge, I can still use that. They might make an interesting arrowhead if I can preserve that that hole. If I can remove a big flake, if I, I can hit this platform here and then remove a big flake and try to capture that hole. We'll see. The uh, top part broke off, but I can still. I might be able to make an arrowhead out of that. Now what I was trying to do is just knock off this mass here, but it ended up breaking almost in, in half, which is okay, because these two pieces are usable. OK, 
Okay. Well, I'm not going to reduce those smaller ones down to bifaces. I think I've shown plenty of those. Just want to give you an idea where to start on something like this. This one has a lot of natural facets on it. It's not too bad. There was a crack in here. I just loosened it. And this one didn't respond very well to the heat treating. There's a lot of uh, cracking in here. This part might be okay. So I'll just toss these pieces. See if I can get rid of this this area of cracking. It doesn't look too bad. With some of these nodules, you're going to encounter cracking because of the uh, temperature changes in the climate with these that are on the surface. But this isn't too bad. Once we get the cortex off and start getting into the uh, interior of the stone, it's not too bad. I'll try to make a biface out of this one. I want to get rid of that cracked area. Okay, I don't see much more evidence, so that looks pretty good. And this is a little bit small for this hammer stone. I'll just quickly reduce it with the uh, indirect percussion flaker. Remove the cortex. I hit right here downward and there must have been an existing crack on the surface because it normally won't, wouldn't do that. But now we've got a natural platform I can send flakes from the end. And it appears to be very nice material right under the cortex. That traveled pretty far. I'm going to dull this end here for some more thinning flakes from the end. I got into the, uh, the habit of doing that from the clovis snapping.
dull that platform here. It's already 10 minutes. So I'm going to go through the rest of these nodules real quick after I finish this little uh, preliminary biface. I'm just trimming now to uh, make it more lenticular and I'm also turning this edge this way so I can run flakes across. I could take some more off the end but the end's getting kind of thin. I could probably take one using this platform. Okay, I'm going to grind this edge here, or bevel it. I just drag it across the rock or the cinder block to lower the edge closer to that hump. And I'm just going to send several flakes over it to uh, whittle it down. either side I'm going to take one flake off off the end here. Okay, so there was a pretty bad turtle back on there, but now it's not so bad. So I'm just going to stop there and. Uh, work on the other ones. Okay. The way to, the way to identify flint, uh, I found this just like this. I didn't test it or anything. Well, I might have taken a small chip out of there. But when I saw it, you can, I could pretty much tell it was flint by the facets. Now sometimes you'll find them faceted like this and when you try to crack them open they they don't respond at all and there are certain types of jasper and other uh, rocks that will look like this but are not going to be good to nap. Um, another way to tell though is these little bulbs. Let's see if I can find another one. It's these little bulbs from impact that's characteristic of flint or chert that's good for napping. And this is just a nodule straight out of the riverbank. Let's, let's try this one. I'm going to try to remove this lump here. Very nice material. And again, this is all heat treated. I just put it in the oven like this. And if it's broken up on the inside, I just toss it. But this one looks pretty good.
Uh, there is some cracking, structural cracks. It's, it's still looking pretty good. I guess you could call that an overshot flake. That'll make an interesting bird point if I can preserve that little uh, bullseye there. Send a flake here. Now this edge isn't very strong. I could strike along here, but the hammerstone is a little bit large to get in there. I can clean this up with the indirect percussion flake or a lot easier. But uh, I'm just going to try it anyway with the hammer stone. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to kind of zigzag way. Well, I just removed that platform. Let's see if I can take some of this off. I didn't do that intentionally. It just the platform crushed. Maybe it'll come in from this direction. I should remove this here so I can do a strike on that. On this this fat area here. So this is not flat enough yet. I'm going to take some of this mass off so I can have a better platform. That was a little bit more than I wanted but it's still okay. And then it's just a simple matter of striking that off. I'm trying to get can just barely catch that platform to send one a flick in this area. And then I'll zigzag. Okay, so I pretty much know that I'll be able to make something out of that. There shouldn't be any more major cracks. There might be a few, 
and there might be one in this area but it's still usable Now what I could do is I could strike here and hope to remove a big flake and then just discard this top part. But it's a little risky. It could crack in half like the other one did. I mean it's a very solid platform here. I could hit here and it will probably split this whole thing in half. Um, it's a little risky like I said if I want to make a larger biface so I'll just reduce it down in a safer way Trying to think of an easy way to just pop that turtle back off. If I strike here on the end, I should be able to run a crack through here and come out this side and remove that big old lump here. Let's see if it doesn't reverse itself. Try 
another one here. Doing a video, buddy. Okay, so that's close enough. There's a little bit of defects in here, but that's close enough for this one. And there's a lot of this size nodules out there. And this might not be very good. You can already see some pitting in here. Let's, let's break it open and see. Yeah, that's an example of one that's not going to be very good. You can see how deep that crack is going into the stone and you can see uh, little flakes on the interior that shouldn't be there. So I'll just toss this one more hit and should confirm that it's broken up on the inside. Yeah, this is broken up on the inside so it's not worth trying. This one I did take a large chunk off before I heat treated it. Looks like it responded pretty well to the heat treating, but there's a big crack there. Let's see how much of this we can use. Another large crack in here. I'm going to try to force that crack all the way through. Yeah, I can make some small bird points out of this. And what I would do is just take flakes off. Using this as a natural platform, I'll just take flakes off for bird points. This part is not usable. I could probably use that for something. But there's not very much usable area on this for a large point. If it's possible, I could strike here and remove this lower part. You know, crack it in half. We'll see you. Yeah, I'm going to try it. Not quite where I thought. I thought the crack might run this way. Because it seems weaker right here. But it actually ran down this way and followed this ridge here almost exactly. And that's a nice piece of stone. This is already shaped well enough for a biface. I know this is going to be okay. I don't see cracking at all on the uh, near the cortex, so this cortex will be easy to remove. I could probably get two bifaces bi out of this one. There is some pitting, but let's see. I mean the pie face I, I just tossed there and, and I can make this in, into a biface so there'd be a total of two bifaces for that for this node this nodule I'll try to eliminate that big lump Turning the edge. I was thinking I could come in through here, but this is a, seems to be a better platform, but it's not at the correct angle.
and come in through this way. Not a very good platform, but hopefully I can make enough contact with that to send a flake across. Now I've crushed. The cortex is kind of crumbly, so I'm going to see if there's another area. I could probably hit this area here. I want to fit that back on there because it's important to see. I got rid of that. This was the original platform surface that I said was not at the correct angle. This is a better angle here. And now I could probably take that off. This platform here is at a very good angle to dry flakes this way. But I think I'd have better success with the indirect percussion flaker because I need to be very precise. If I hit it with the hammer stone, it may not hit right in the exact area. And I could blow off the tip or I could actually crack, crack it through here. With precision, it follows the flakes follow a ridge a lot better with a precision strike.
And just because it's heat treated doesn't mean that it's going to be very glass like. It just makes it easier to nap, not necessarily easy. This rock is still fairly tough. So that's good enough. Just look for uh, natural platforms. Try hitting in there, breaking this bottom part off. But I see a lot of cracks on the surface, so I'm just going to take a small piece off for now just to see what it looks like. I can tell I cracked it quite a bit. There we go. Yeah, this one would not be worth napping. Too many internal cracks. <laughs> Same thing with this. I'm just going to take a little piece off. That one actually looks pretty nice. Nice color. Cracking though. Might not be worth it. It's not too bad. I might need to heat it again. It's still really tough. But it flakes alright. And there doesn't look to appear to be too many internal fractures. color pattern. There is some internal junk in here. For the most part, it looks usable. I'm going to try to take an end thinning flake on both sides. First off of here, and then off of the front. Or the tip. Take one off of here. Hopefully. Try 
coming from the other side now. Clean up the edge a little bit. I have braided this edge here. Very small. I'm just turning this edge this way. Brushed it back. I'm looking for opportunistic platforms. It's already 43 minutes, so I'll wrap this up pretty soon here. I may have taken off too much mass there when I turn that edge, but I can't seem to get anywhere with this edge, so... Switch over to the indirect... Just brush back the edge, brush it this way. Now this is right about at center line. That's why I'm hesitating to hit it. I need to be a little bit below center line. I could strike here, but I'm pretty narrow and I'm going to lose more width if I strike here. So. I want to strike on this side. The lump is pretty close to this edge, so it's harder. It's easier to send a flake off of this side, but I don't want to lose too much width. Okay, that's good enough. Good enough.
Now that's very nice material. Excellent material. The color is what I like. The actual chart itself is kind of rough and uh, probably brittle, but the, the color is excellent. There's some junk here. I probably won't be able to nap this too much junk in there. But this just looks alright. Maybe. I may be able to get a couple of small bird points out of that. The danger with having so much junk in here is in hitting along the edges it could just crack in half. It's, but if it's that weak it wouldn't have supported a point anyway. Okay, another end thinning flake. 48 minutes. Good enough. I think this is uh, yeah, this is the last one. No, I I cracked this earlier. Okay, so that's it. Maybe one more. And that's too broken up to use, even though the material is nice and glossy. Too many internal defects. Okay, that's it.